Hello everybody, I'm Andrew Hoffman. I'm a software engineer, a security researcher, and a technical author based out of the Pacific Northwest. Typically, I'm producing videos on cybersecurity and programming. Today, I wanted to give you a tutorial on how to build a character customizer in Godot Game Engine from start to finish. So in this one video, you'll learn how to build a character customization scene within Godot so that you can produce RPGs and other types of video games with deep character customization. Now I'm going to be using assets that I purchased online. All of these assets, you'll see there's eyes, there's hair, etc. These are purchased from limezoo.itch.io. So once again, limezoo.itch.io. I'm only shouting that out. This is not a sponsored video. In fact, this is a totally voluntary shout out because if you go here, you can get a whole bunch of game assets which can be temporary placeholder assets or final assets if you're okay with your game looking like other people's games for a very reasonable price. But the reason we're using this in this particular video tutorial is because this pack, I think it's called Modern Interiors, also comes with a large number of characters, outfits, accessories, eye colors, etc. So if you go pick this up, you'll get a bunch of Modern Interiors, if you look at the GIF in the middle of the page here, you can kind of see what some of the characters we can create with the additional character sprites are going to look like. And our character customizer will allow us to produce sprites, to produce characters that look like the ones in the middle of the page. So I'm always trying to give shout outs to anyone who helps enable my videos, even if I did pay for it, I think it's a good deal. So the first thing that we're going to do in order to get started on building this character customizer is we're going to click open in file manager and then we're going to create three new folders one of them is going to be called scripts another is going to be called scenes and another is going to be called assets so we're going to be opening the root godot game in the file manager and adding these three folders and this is just for the sake of organization the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to be clicking into the assets folder and dragging and dropping our assets into the assets folder in the Godot directory. And Godot will try to import these assets. So these can be assets you purchased, they could also be assets you've made, as long as you have bodies, eyes, outfits, and hair. Now, after you've moved your assets into the Godot assets folder, if you click back on the Godot game engine, you might notice that the Godot game engine freezes, even on a high-end system. This is something I've encountered a number of times. And what I found is if you try to import too many assets at once, it can actually cause Godot to crash. And if that happens to you, what you need to do is, instead of drag and dropping all your assets at once, just drag and drop a couple at a time and that will resolve the problem. In this case, we were able to get through the asset importing process without a crash. So that's a pretty good outcome as far as I'm concerned. So from here, if you look within the Godot tree, you'll see that there's a large number of bodies and eyes, etc. But we're going to create a 2D scene and we're going to drop it in the scenes folder and we're going to call it customizer. Now we're going to rename the top level node and we're just going to call it customizer for the sake of getting these good habits and well organized projects. And inside of that, we are going to create a child node. This child node is going to be a tile map. If you haven't seen my other tutorial, on tile maps, I believe it's called Master Tile Maps in 15 Minutes. You definitely want to check that out if you're building a 2D game in the Godot game engine. It pretty much distills everything I know about tile maps in a very short amount of time. So from here in the tile map, we're going to click Create New Tile Set. We're going to open the tile set, and then we are going to drag and drop our bodies. And we should rename the tile map to something like bodies just so that we have better organization. Now, if we jump back into that tile set and drag and drop those assets again, but well, we're gonna have to re-drag and drop them because we didn't actually turn them into tiles. Um, we're gonna click create new single tile and we're gonna select the fourth avatar from the right, the fourth character from the right because he's always in the same orientation. He just has a different skin color. And as you make your character customization more and more advanced, you might want to show different poses, but for this tutorial, we're only going to show these poses. In fact, you can see if I drag and drop over the grid in the 2D plane for this 2D scene, I can drop these guys and they're identical 
with the exception of the color of their skin. And that's actually pretty important for building a 2D customization tool and a 2D framework where you can put armor and weapons on all your characters. So we're gonna change the cell size to 3232 because these are actually more akin to 3232 sprites. In this case, it's a little bit bigger than 3232, but it's close enough for our purposes. And we're gonna increase the transform scale to three you don't need to do that for your own game. That's only to make these characters look a little bit bigger so they're easier to see uh, for this tutorial. Now, the Z index is important. You'll note that the Z index for bodies is at zero. Now this is key when building 2D, yeah, in particular 2D character customization tools. Now, we're gonna duplicate this using Control D, that we're gonna duplicate the body's node, which is the tile map, and we're gonna call the next one eyes, and then hair, and then outfits. So we're just gonna do some renaming here. The reason we're duplicating is because that will duplicate all the settings, including the scale of three, and the tile size of 3232. Now, inside of eyes, we wanna change the Z index to one, because we always want eyes to appear on top of the body versus below the body. We're gonna to go to the eyes folder and we're gonna drag and drop some eyes. And we're gonna do the same thing we did with the body. We're gonna create some tiles out of these eyes. Bingo. So now we have a number of eyes that are being pulled into our tile map as assets that we can paste onto our 2D plane. And we're gonna change the eyes to Z index one and the hair to Z index two. The reason why is because we want the hair to always cover the eyes, just like in real life. And now we're gonna drag a couple hairstyles in. But there are definitely a lot of colors um, for hair and we don't need that many. For this tutorial we only need, let's just say five because we have five eyes and we have five bodies. And so let's get five outfits as well to go with that. And for the outfits, let's change the Z index as well, and let's change it to three. So we create a new tile set, we click the tile set icon, we drag and drop a couple outfits in. It looks like the outfit on the fourth column from the left corresponds with the forwards facing guy, so the forwards facing character. So let's grab those outfits, let's grab five of them. And now that we have all five of our outfits, we can actually drop a couple of these on the 2D world to get an idea of what they would look like stacked on top of each other and make sure that we got the Z indexes correct. So as you can see, I'm changing the eyes. I can also change the hairstyle and everything is appearing correctly. So it's all appearing in the correct Z axis or Z index, I guess, as they call it in the 2D space. So from this, we can generate a lot of different characters. However, our players won't have access to the game engine. So we have to script a UI where they can customize their characters and save their characters for later use. So in order to do this, I'm gonna add a new node 2D. This is just for organization. And I'm gonna call that buttons. Within this node 2D, I'm gonna add some child nodes, which are actually gonna be buttons. Now the idea is that these buttons will be used by the player to customize their character. So what we're gonna do for starters is we're gonna play around with the minimum sizes of these buttons in order to get them to a size where we can easily fit in the text required to express to the player what the button does. So I'm trying a couple here just to get a good size. It looks like maybe 200 on the X would be good. And then beyond that, I'm gonna go to, once again, scale, and I'm probably just gonna triple the scale so they're easy to see in this video tutorial. Finally, I'm gonna give it a name not a name, but in fact a text at the very top. This is gonna be change body. And then I'm gonna click it and control D several times after I've renamed it to something that is a little bit more recognizable. 
for example, body button. So control D, duplicate, because we want to get the same minimum sizes and stuff. We're going to get three, three duplications out of this button, and we're going to rename them. Change eyes, change hair, and of course, change outfit. I'm going to slide them around a little bit and uh, name the text accordingly so it all looks nice. So very soon there will be a change body, change eyes, and change hair, and change outfit button, but you'll see they're not aligned correctly. And I'm not going to do a ton of work with the alignment here, but I'm just going to change them to 450 on the X. That way, none of them overlap with the player character that we are going to be customizing. Now, we have all of these buttons, and you could boot up the game, select current scene, and you won't be able to see them. The reason why is because there's no camera that has a correct orientation. So we can create a camera 2D on our root node, and we can expand it a little bit so it gets everything in view. But on your own project, you probably want your camera to be perhaps separate from the customizer and a little bit more customized to your individual project. In this case, I'm creating a really big camera that wouldn't really have any use elsewhere in the game, but it's big because I wanted to get big buttons and large characters so they're easy to see in the video. Now you can see I click these buttons, but they don't do anything, even though I can load up the scene and interact with the buttons. So what do we do from here? We create a new script. It's going to be a GD script, and we're just going to call it Customizer. We can open up that script. We can drag and drop it to the root node called Customizer in our scene. And we can cut out some of this boilerplate code. So the first thing we're going to want to do inside of this script is we're going to want to start by collecting references to the tile maps. Because if you think about it, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be programmatically tapping into the tile map APIs and we're going to be having our code tell the tile maps what to render and where to render it. So we can do this shorthand style by using the dollar sign eyes, which will grab the node with the name eyes in the current scene. Alternatively, we could use get underscore node followed by the name to get the same result. The next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to set up some variables that track the current state of the player. This will allow us to save the player state and use it later. It'll also allow us to easily track the state of what body they have, what hairstyle they have, etc. for use in our own programming. So we can start by creating an int and setting it equal to zero with the name body, another with eyes, hair, and outfits. And the reason that we're casting it in and setting it to zero is because we can think of the tile map as having a collection of tiles in an array which are all index zero. So zero actually is going to correspond with the first tile in every array. And for the sake of having good names here, the variables at the top, I'm going to add tiles after them. So we know that this is not an index for the tile. This is actually the tiles object themselves. So this is going to be the tile maps that we're pulling in. Next, we're going to need a function called render character. And what this function is going to do is it's going to have to look at the data that we have inside of our character data, body, eyes, hair, outfits. And it's going to look at the tiles that we've imported and it's going to render at the right position the tile with the corresponding index. So for example, body.tiles or body underscore tiles dot set cell. Zero minus one body is basically saying one cell above zero zero, we want to render the body. The reason why is because if you remember, the body was too high and it's gonna render top down. So the head will be at minus one and the rest of the body will be below it. Uh, and as a result of that, we want the eyes to be at zero, zero, 
we'd also like the hair to be at minus one because we want to render that on the the topmost tile of the player. Remember, once again, these players take up about 1.25 cells. Now, there's a little bit of a naming issue here, but we can resolve that pretty quickly. And next, what we want to do is hook into a built-in Godot function, like underscore ready, which is called whenever all the nodes enter the tree. And from within this underscore ready function, we want to call render character. That way, initially, when we load the scene, it will render a character for us. And this is prior to the buttons working, of course. But as you can see, we have a character that loaded in. The character is not in the scene from the game engine. We can transform the character a little bit bigger even by changing the size, or in this case, I think it's called the scale, to 5 rather than 3. I know one of the most common feedback these tutorials get is it's hard to see the screen because there's so much going on. So let's change all of those tile maps to rendering at a scale of 5 and there's a little bit bigger character. Now none of the buttons do anything though but we know that we're rendering index 0 of all of these tile maps. So if we were to change a variable in here, for example if we were to change hair to 1 from 0, you'll see we have a different hairstyle that rendered. So we're rendering from the tile maps. This is step 1 of getting a programmatic character customization tool. The next thing we need to do is we need to go through all these buttons and actually hook them up to some functionality. So we click node on the right and under the signals tab we'll click pressed, we'll right click create connection, and what we're doing is we're going to be generating methods that are connected via Godot's signals. So if you click connect, it'll generate a method you can see in the code. And the idea behind this is a signal allows you to call a function when a UI element is pressed. So you do this once again on the right of the inspector node. You right click the functionality you want to hook into with a signal. And then you connect them. Now we have all these empty functions. Now these empty functions are all connected to the button. So all we really have to do is fill them in with a little bit of functionality. And that functionality is actually pretty simple. The first thing that we're going to want to do is we want to check to see if we've gone too far. So we only have five sprites each, five tiles each, for each of the body's eyes, hair, and outfits. So we want to say if, if the value of the body index is greater than or equal to four, we're going to reset it to zero. So we loop back to the original versus going off to a null index and causing an error. So this is kind of error catching and also makes the experience for the user much nicer because we could just not let them progress further. The other thing we're going to do is if that's not the case we just want to increment body by one and then call render character again. And we can copy and paste this for all the other functions. The only difference is in each of these functions we're going to be modifying a different index. For example eyes, eyes, and then hair. So in each of these places where it says body, you'd have to replace with the appropriate index, outfit, outfit, outfit. And uh, remember to call render character. So you want to re-render the character whenever you change the data that corresponds with the character model. Now, if we were to run this once again, what you'd find is, here we go, so if we were to run this, we click change body, and we can change the skin tone of our player character. Now, the same thing works for eyes, hair, outfit, etc. So now we have a fully complete 2D character creation tool. And if you wanted to save this character data, all you have to do is save the body, hair, eyes, and outfit integers into a save file and make sure that you load them in the correct order next time the character loads the game. So that's about it for today. I just wanted to show you guys this because you know I thought it was something that is in a lot of games. So this is functionality that you're gonna have to produce for pretty much any game you build with character customization. But it's not really well documented on you know how most people go about it. And I think this process of using the Z index is one of the most simple methods of implementing this type of functionality in the Godot game engine. 
So if you like this tutorial, thank you again for watching. Make sure to click the subscribe button to the bottom right of the video. And I am looking forward to seeing all of your comments and suggestions in the comments section below the video.